So welcome back to Sprager Homestead. Today we're talking solar power. Now solar power is always something that everybody asks when they learn you're off grid and that they always think you live in a shack or they don't understand it at all. So today I'm going to try to explain to you how easy solar can be and there's only two questions you need to ask yourself. Number one, are you going to be on grid or grid tied or off grid? Because the systems between those, while they look similar, definitely use different equipment. So you've got to make that determination. If you're grid tied today, there's almost no need to go completely off grid unless it's a choice. You can always be grid tied and feed back to the uh, power company or the utility company and get credits back towards the winter months, etc. Secondly, you have to honestly ask yourself, what do you want your lifestyle to be? So when I talk lifestyle, what I really mean is I want you to think about what power requirements do you want to live with? If you're going to have a small fridge, maybe a small freezer, no TV, you know, kind of a minimal lifestyle, your system doesn't have to be very elaborate. For us, we have two freezers, obviously a nice fridge. We also run a 240-volt uh, well that we pump water with to our uh, house, our cistern, and even when we water the garden, that's all run off our well, of course, driven by solar power. So your power requirements are definitely going to make up some of what you nearly need to consider when you go for solar, whether it's either on-grid or off-grid. You have to make that kind of choice. So now once I figured that out, I knew, well, yeah, I'm going to have a fridge. I'm going to have a freezer, maybe two. So I f factored all that in. One thing I wasn't going to have, I don't have a pool here. So all the power that was required to run the pool pump, X amount of hours per day, I didn't need that. So I scratched it off the list. That reduces my power usage. But then we started factoring in other things we needed to use. One, we're going to run overnight. We're going to run uh, a brooder. We're going to run uh, heat pads for, for birds because we raise our own birds. We're going to run an incubator six months of the year. And it's a big cavity incubator which takes some power. So you start figuring out all the requirements of what you're going to have or what you don't need from today. And then you figure out how much power am I going to use per day, per month, per year, etc. I factor it down very simply to per day because that's really the basic unit of what you want to worry about to build a system for. How do you make it through a day? What are my core requirements for a day? And then you can start figuring out a contingency of what do I do if I can't make enough power during the day? How long can my batteries run before I need to get power going? And you can start figuring out some strategies to be able to do that. Now once I figured all that out for ourselves, my rough calculation, what I thought I needed, I just gave a little bit extra. So I gave myself an extra 20 to 30% power and I factored that off of the worst days of the year. So in my strategy for power, we have a backup generator and there's 365 days a year. My strategy is I only want to use that generator on an average of twice per month. Now, nine months out of the year, you're not going to have any problem. It's the winter months when you're going to have low, low sun that you're really going to have to worry about having power. The days like today where it's beautiful and sunny, by 11 o'clock my batteries are recharged and now I'm just kind of wasting solar energy. Don't need it. I'm using it obviously to run the uh, well to do the garden, but that's okay. So as we got through this, I figured out, you know, for, for myself, if I got two hours of sun a day, we're going to use an average of 12 kilowatt hours per day. Think of that as 12 kilowatts, and my array is 6,000 watts. For two hours a day, I'm going to collect a maximum of that, or a certain amount, a fraction of that. That's going to equal out where I'm going to be, where I want to be for my life during the winter. Summer, A-OK. -okay. So now we'll just kind of step through all of our uh, equipment here. I'm going to show you the panels how we do everything with these, what it takes to build them, because it's really simple. And then I'll take you inside to the equipment, to the battery, et cetera, and show you our setup there. And then that's really it. And then you're going to have questions and that. So it's going to be up to you to ask what you want to know. So now I'm in our, in our strategy that I wanted 6,000 watts in panels, which really honestly is a lot, but I'm really factoring in the engineer in me, factors in worst case scenario, what's going to happen to meet my strategy. So you see behind us, we actually have uh, panels up. These are 24 
panels. These are 250 volts a piece. And then how are they held on here? These little brackets, these rails all the way through, these are just bought at Home Depot. So these are just a, a, a strut, a unistrut. They're electrical grade, contractor grade, etc. You can buy them there at your local uh, home improvement store. We have Home Depot, whatever you've got. These connectors here, these are actually bought at an electrical supply store, but they're made to just kind of go on some channel, and they just bolt and hold it down. If you notice the bases here, these are just concrete. Now when we poured the pad for our shop, we had these also poured themselves. The channel on the bottom there, you can see, that's gonna be just some angle iron. It's three inch angle iron I bought from a local metal supply store. They've got two holes in it. One is obviously in the front, one is at the back. And those are gonna be just my lower and upper settings. So right now I've got it on the upper so it's all the way forward, pushing the panels high and more horizontal. And that's gonna be for maximum sun during the summer into the winter. And in the winter, we actually take these and we lower them down so it gives more of an angle, and that way you can get sun further away that's not coming in directly over you like in the summer. Now obviously on the back side you can see just the pieces themselves. Now all these are going to run in series, so you're going to run negative to positive, negative to positive, blah blah blah, all the way through. The, you can see right here is just some gray conduit. Again, just electrical grade, contractor grade, what you want to call it. This stuff is what's required for building codes. Again, you're going to buy all this stuff at of a local supply store. Here's my unit strut, all the pieces there you can see behind me. All that stuff is just bought locally and it's used just uh, nuts and bolts basically to hold it all together. All the tubing itself, again, same thing. It's all gonna be bought there. We actually uh, buried the foundation or the pieces in concrete. The rest is just, I don't know if you wanna call it fencing or what you wanna have, but it's threaded on the outside, it's galvanized. It's gonna hold up during the weather, be great for you. This is just the distribution box or the collection box if you want to call it. We had planned all of our building up in front so we buried all of our utilities. It's all run into the shop underground. That way it's down in there. For this, again, it's just electrical grade stuff. You can buy at uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, etc. You can see the two bubbles on the outside. Those are surge protectors or lightning arresters if you want to call them that. And everything else, pretty simple. Okay, so here's where things always get exciting. This is really just kind of the command center, I'm gonna call it. So now you have power coming in the bottom from your solar panels coming up in. You have your chargers over on the side, you've got your inverters. Now you're gonna ask yourself, or you're gonna start researching it, you're gonna ask, what kind of a system do I need? Obviously you're gonna have 110 into your house most likely, but for this stuff, you're either gonna have a 24 or a 48 volt system. We are a full 48 volt system and it's not because it's one, it's better than 24, etc. When we first purchased this place, the well here is a 48 volt well. So it only made sense since the well was only a few years old and it was gonna last a long time to make everything 48 volt. Simple as that. There are uh, differences between them a little bit, but you know what, that's a choice that you need to make and based on system itself. But, so we're 48 and everything else is gonna be based on 48. So obviously I've got two inverters. Uh, when I run the well like I am today, it's obviously gonna run both. And these are 24 a piece, 24 volts. They'll combine up to be able to run the well. Otherwise, most of the time, only one is in use and it's called the master. And then the other one's called the slave, basically. That's how they're turned. So the master is gonna run primarily most of the time until you need that extra voltage like to run a well, etc. And then you have the, the output there. Up here is you're going to be what they call the mate. This is kind of the brains of the operation. It kind of communicates with everything, makes sure it all works well. And then in this you apply your strategies. Something similar as for us, uh, we get down to 75% on our battery charge. It turns off half of our house. If it gets to 70, it disables the whole system. That way we don't go any lower and keep drawing power out of our batteries. Now that is a something we do. You can do something different if you want, you don't even have to have it. But that's how we do it to ensure our battery life. Now, inside this box is our battery backup. So this is what we use for power overnight. Obviously during nighttime, you're not making power with your panels. So you've gotta have something to supply power. So this is where we keep our batteries. It's literally just a three quarter plywood, just a box. We've got some uh, purple, I think it's one and a half or two inch insulation underneath. 
just for a little bit of support underneath to keep it from rubbing on concrete. And then it's just a made of a box. It's all going to the side and then the vent on the back, that's just pulling fumes out. So the box along the bottom down here, you can see all these little holes. That's pulling in cool air across the batteries. It's being evacuated up out, out of the eave of the shop on the outside. So now the lid of it is actually just hinged at the top. Now it's a piano hinge. You can buy that also again at a local home improvement store most likely. Very easy to put in. The batteries themselves, they're just turned for floor scrubbers. So on ours you can see it's completely full. Now each battery themselves are six volts and then you have 16 total. So I want you to think of it versus that. It, think of it as two parallel systems. They're like family. They support each other. So on this side you've got eight, that side you've got eight. Now there are strings in series individually and then they run side by side all the way up. So each one of those will have your uh, wattage there. So it's about total for the whole system, about 40,000 watts of power or 40 kW kilowatts. These battery cables I just had made at a local auto parts store that made battery cables. Very simple. Now these are the US battery L16 series, six volts. They're, they're a uh, lead acid. According to US Battery and the distributor we got through, you keep it about 80% charge. They will last 10 to 15 years somewhere in there. So again, think of strategy. When I don't try to pull out more than about 80 to 75% out of the batteries, that's why. I'm trying to increase the longevity of these batteries. Okay, so now, like I mentioned, there are gonna be days when you will not make enough power. Could be from weather, etc. A lot of days for us over the winter, there's a lot of heavy snow days, and you'll get days, three, four days in a row, you won't make enough power. So the question is, what are you gonna do? For us, we have a backup generator. So what you see here is a 6,000 watt generator. It's run by a Kubota diesel two cylinder. It's liquid cooled, very easy to replace if I had to. Everything is easily and commonly found with a little bit of research and luckily most places in town they really carry stuff I need. So for this it's manually started we we run it I don't want it doing uh, auto start or anything but it's diesel you just basically hook up your fuel lines your uh, in and out just a little gas can and I run this probably once a week during the winter if not uh, twice a week and then during the summer months probably nine months of the year I run it once a month for an hour or two just to make sure the fluids are, are used up in it or just for maintenance I guess you'd say. So outside of that, that's really our whole system. Panels, all the equipment inside, the battery for overnight, and then you have your backup for the worst case scenario. Okay, so that's my spiel on solar. You've seen our system from front basically to back. What questions do you have? If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. You can subscribe to all of our stuff. You can also follow us on Instagram. I'm always putting up pictures, and so is my wife. We're at Sprague River Homestead here on YouTube, plus on Instagram, and we also have a Facebook page there. Anything you guys want to see based off our homestead, you have questions, let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.